Gordon Cawley reporting. Now, an attempt in the House of Lords to extend libel reform to Northern Ireland was last week withdrawn after a government minister warned that the Stormont executive must have primacy on the issue. When the Defamation Act 2013 brought about the first major changes to the UK's libel laws since the 19th century, the then DUP Finance Minister Sammy Wilson halted its extension here. Joining me now to discuss this, Lord Bew, who's part of that attempt in the Lords to extend reform here, and the lawyer Paul Tweed, who's opposed to the move. Paul Tweed, that's it in a nutshell then. This, uh, the absence of this legislation curtails free and open discussion critically about the key issue of the past. No, well, in my opinion, first of all, it was actually outrageous that uh, these players in the House of Lords uh, attempted to impose legislation on Northern Ireland, which I should say has already been rejected by Scotland. They're not adopting it. Uh, we have a situation where the Republic of Ireland's laws are broadly similar to our own as they currently stand, so there's absolutely no need for change whatsoever. Uh, as far as our libel laws are concerned, there are plenty of safety mechanisms built in. For instance, I mean, I act for both newspapers and plaintiffs. And just before Christmas, I was acting for one of the national newspapers in defending a case of so-called libel tourism. And we successfully did that because the uh, plaintiff was unable to establish that he had sufficient connection to Northern Ireland. So the law, as it currently stands, is very effective. My big concern here is about access to justice for the ordinary man in the street. We talk about academics and scientists, and I should say, with, I sympathise with Lord Bew's views, if he feels that there is a genuine threat to academic and scientific debate, then I would certainly be more than happy uh, to countenance uh, specific changes in the law, but not a whole scale introduction of a, of a, a numerous law that completely makes it impossible for the ordinary person to take legal proceedings here in Northern Ireland. And finally, if I could make one other point, one of the key changes in this legislation is the removal of the juries. I mean, I sat on all the Ministry of Justice panels in London when they were debating the UK uh, change to the law, or the English change to the law, and I didn't get one argument that convinced me that the juries were not going, doing a good job here, and it's very significant that the one thing the press are very worried about here are their readers, the general public, deciding whether they have performed properly and fairly in terms of their reporting. And this is not motivated in any sense by the fact that you as a libel lawyer, somebody who specialises in this, may find yourself very busy if the status quo is maintained. There will be no change, I mean, there's not going to be a rush of oligarchs coming to Northern Ireland, believe me. Well, you don't I, would, I would do, well, I can take, well, I, I know from my own experience, because I work from London, Dublin and Belfast, and less than 5% of my work takes place in Belfast. The most is in Dublin, but we also operate in London. I don't mind, I will work within the law and whatever the law gives to me, but I cannot get justice for the general public where they have no access to legal aid. In Northern Ireland, we have always been treated differently from the rest of okay. the UK. You can, lawyers are not allowed to operate on a no win, no fee basis. We cannot recover ATE insurance payments. So we've always been treated differently. Okay. I mean, our law is very broadly similar to Scotland and broadly similar to Ireland. But just to put all this in perspective, the number of libel actions that have come before the courts in Belfast over the last 30 years when I've been practicing, probably are two every decade at most. The Sweet and Maxwell carried out a survey in England uh, about the, this so-called libel tourism, which people think, I mean, if you're reading the newspapers, you think they're coming in like Triffids. I mean, they find there's only a negligible number. This is a non-issue. It's a non-problem. It's something that obviously the press are very sensitive about to protect their financial interests, but it's not an issue. OK. Um, well, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens and how it's discussed at Stormont in due course. Thank you both very much indeed for coming in to join us.